I am Peggy Maddox. I'm from Kids on the Land. Perhaps you remember me from last year when you came out to the ranch. We are so sorry we cannot have you out on the land this year because of the virus. But since you can't come to us, we want to come to you through some video presentations. If you remember, we at Kids on the Land have a mission. We want you to learn about the place where you live. Why do we think that's so important? Well, we believe if you connect to the land, especially the land in your environment, we'll all take care of it. Why? Why do we think that? Because we know if you know more about the place where you live, you'll be willing to take care of it and we will all learn to love it. Now today, we're going to be learning about water. I brought this apple with me today and I want you to think about this as the planet Earth. You know, the planet Earth is oftentimes called the water planet. That's because we have so much water. Now I'm going to cut this apple into four pieces, perhaps. <laughs> now why am I cutting it into four pieces? How much water is there on our planet? Does anybody know? Come on. Yes, 75% of our planet is covered in water. So I have four pieces here. That means I've got to take away the three that represent water, and this would be the, the soil, the land we have on Earth. Oh my goodness, we have so much water. But are we able to drink? This water, is this all fresh water? No. Most of this water is salt water we find in our oceans. So I've got to take those two pieces. Now what I have left is this. It represents all the fresh water on our planet that we're going to be able to drink, the wildlife can drink, we can use to grow our crops. No, this is not all usable for that. Why? Because these two pieces represent the water that's frozen in the glaciers and in our polar ice caps. So this small piece right here represents all the water, the fresh water, we have on this planet that sustains all of our life. So this little piece represents all the fresh water. Why haven't we run out of water? Of course, you know that. It's the good old water cycle. Now the water cycle is so important, we need to keep it healthy. But let's look at that process we call the water cycle. Now we know that it begins with the sun. And the energy from the sun will warm the water, which is transferred into a vapor from the oceans, from the seas, from our creeks, and it all goes up into the atmosphere. So what's that called? evaporation. So liquid water is sloshing around in our oceans, lakes, rivers. When it evaporates, it becomes water vapor and floats around in the air. And eventually that water vapor changes into water droplets and the droplets get together and form clouds. And we call that condensation. The clouds become heavy with water droplets and that produces the rain, the snow, sleet, ice, hail, that falls back to the earth, and we call that precipitation. So water rains down on the earth as precipitation. Some of it soaks deep into the ground and may become part of underground storage that we call aquifers, and that is called infiltration. 
Now plants put water back into the water cycle, and this occurs when the plants, through their roots, soak up some of that water that has infiltrated down into the soil, comes back up the stems, into the leaves, and is released back into the atmosphere as water vapor, and we call that transpiration. So some of the pre precipitation will flow into uh, our lakes, our rivers and streams, and on into the ocean, and we call that accumulation and surface runoff. Then the sun is shining again, and the whole process continues over and over. But there are certain things we need to do in order to keep this cycle healthy so that we keep having all the water we need here on our planet. And now that we know about the water cycle, we're going to go over and meet Matthew Kaufman, who's brought a rainfall simulator for us to see. So we're here now with Matthew Kaufman, and he has brought this rainfall simulator. A rainfall simulator is a device to demonstrate what happens when precipitation falls to the earth. Good morning, kids. My name is Matthew Kaufman. I'm a rangeland management specialist. I work for the NRCS uh, and in partnership with uh, an organization called the Texas Grazing Land Coalition. Y'all have been discussing a little bit about the water cycle and um, the different aspects of it, the different processes and the different parts of it from evaporation and transpiration to condensation when it's up in the clouds to the precipitation when it falls back to the ground uh, and then the infiltration or the runoff, uh, depending on uh, depending on the part of the water cycle and the watershed that our rain falls on. So we're going to give a little bit of a demonstration uh, when it comes to healthy water cycles and unhealthy water cycles. You know, we're going to talk a little bit about how our management of the land can affect those water cycles in either a good or a bad way. So first of all, I want to go back a little history. The Natural Resources Conservation Service was started at a time uh, in where uh, Western America was in what we call the Dust Bowl. Now this was a time of very extreme drought, very dry period, and um, uh, our first chief, a man named Hugh Hammond Bennett, saw the need for soil conservation uh, across America. Uh, there was a time of, during the time of bad drought uh, and uh, improper livestock grazing, we had a lot of bare soil, also a lot of uh, a, lo a lot of farming methods that left the soil exposed for long periods of time. Uh, we had a period of extreme soil erosion and wind erosion, so they had these dust storms uh, in west in uh, you know Western America, parts of Texas, Oklahoma, New Mexico, Kansas, Nebraska, Colorado. Uh, that became called an area that became an area called the Dust Bowl uh, because of the uh, the wind erosion and the soil erosion. Anyway, we've learned a lot since then, and the Natural Resources Conservation was started out of that period uh, because a man named Hugh Hammond Bennett saw the need for soil conservation, and he saw the need to get local people involved in a way to fix the problem. So, anyway, uh, let's get back to our water cycle. Uh, I have here some uh, demonstrations. Uh, this would be what we would see on native rangeland or pasture land. Uh, undisturbed, um, unfarmed, unfarmed land. And I have here some different examples of um, what we can do as far as management and how our management might affect the water cycle. So water evaporates and it condensates, forms clouds, and then it falls again, and that's the precipitation. Now when it hits the ground, this is where our management comes into play. This is where we can affect our water cycle. Okay, I have here some tall grasses uh, this would be an uh, example of what the rolling plains, which is where we're at, uh, this is, that's the ecological region that we're in, we're in the rolling plains of Texas. This would be kind of an example of what the native vegetation of the rolling plains would have been like. Um, so we have some tall grasses here, and we have a very important one up front, if y'all don't know this. Um, this is called side oats grama, this is actually the state grass of Texas. And you can see how it gets its name. It has the little oak seedlings that um, grow off the side of the stem. And this is a very palatable 
uh, very productive, very nutritious grass for livestock uh, and, a and animals. Very, and, uh, very important for covering the ground and controlling soil erosion. Um, so we have uh, some examples of our tall grass situation that would be native to the rolling plains. Here's something, here's some short grass prairie. Uh, there are areas of that, this is buffalo grass, but you know, areas of sod grasses, the shorter grasses, uh, that, um, you know, where maybe our uh, taller grasses have been, uh, have been uh, overutilized or improperly utilized, or they've gone away and we have some short grass in. And then we have an example of our unhealthy water cycle. This is maybe an area that's been uh, mis uh, it's been improperly grazed for too long, the soil's been left bare for too long, um, invasive plants like our brush and cactus have moved in and, and uh, they're, they're um, causing an interruption in the water cycle for you know our, our native grass plants that do an excellent job of covering the ground to, to get water. Okay, so we're going to look at uh, what happens when uh, rain falls on uh, each of our different types here and then uh, we're going to discuss a little bit about the water cycle and, and what happened so here we are we're gonna we're getting ready to make it rain One thing to notice, when these raindrops condensate up in the sky and they come falling back to earth, they're moving extremely, extremely fast. And they're just screaming out of the sky like a little missile headed towards the ground. Okay, and now when these raindrops strike bare soil, we, have, uh, we can have some severe water erosion. Okay, and we'll demonstrate this a little bit in a minute. But as you see, as this rainfall passes over our grassland covers, okay, you can see the grass, the grass is absorbing the energy of those raindrops of that rainfall, and it is uh, slowing it down, and it is allowing for that water cycle to function, and uh, so that we have uh, infiltration into our soil, which is where everything we eat and depend on grows from. Pop it up. We'll make it stop raining now. Okay, now we're going to look at what happened with the rainfall when it landed on the ground. And we're going to discuss the parts of the, the water cycle. Now the rain, that was the precipitation. Now when it hits, we have, two, we have uh, two places for the water to go. It can either infiltrate into the soil, that's your infiltration, or it can go into what we call runoff, surface runoff. So now let's look back at our grass cover types. Um, we, we saw the grass absorbing the energy of the rainfall and we saw it protecting the soil. And now we're gonna see, we have some buckets down here. And there's two sets of buckets. The ones out front here are catching the surface runoff from our different examples here. The ones down underneath are catching the infiltration. That's the water that goes through the soil and out the bottom of our uh, pans here. So you see on our tall grass cover types that we're protecting the soil, um, in our runoff jugs, we have a little bit of runoff, not just a whole lot, but notice that it's, notice that it's a lot cleaner and clearer. Um, and then we have, and look at this one over here, this is the infiltration jug off of one of our tall grass types. Um, see that, the majority of the water that landed on this example of ground cover here went all the way through the soil and is into the ground. Now that is how our aquifers in the rolling plains get recharged. That's what um, charges our aquifers, it, it makes our springs flow, uh, rivers run and things like spring fed rivers and stuff run. And it's, it, it's still coming out down there. Now uh, we have our short grass model here maybe something that we could have managed a little bit better in the past. Um, we're catching a little runoff, um, but it is getting just a little bit dirty. 
that's hard to see but that water is getting just a little bit dirty and uh, because there's just a little bit more bare ground exposed and we are catching a little bit of infiltration in this model but not nearly as much as we were when we have our uh, deep rooted tall grass plants the roots in these plants go extremely deep in the soil and allow passage for that water to infiltrate Here in our version of what I would call an unhealthy water cycle, um, almost all of the water that hit the surface made it into our runoff jug, uh, and it is extremely dirty and extremely muddy. Uh, so if we're talking about an unhealthy watershed that feeds a lake uh, where uh, you know there's a drinking water, maybe it's a drinking water source, maybe it's a recreational source for fishing and whatever, that's what's running on an unhealthy watershed. That's what's running into our lakes, silting it in, it's causing problems. Um, so, this is where our, this is where we can affect, we can use our management to affect what happens to our water cycle. So, um, or well, let's talk. Let's go back to the erosion real quick. Um, if you look at our splashboard behind here. You can see behind the, the bare ground, the unhealthy watershed model, there's little bits of soil and mud um, that have stuck to our splashboard back here. And then in our watersheds where we have a healthy cover, uh, there's not any, very little, if any at all. So the water falling on the bare soil um, is a, uh, can cause severe, severe water erosion. Um, and this is where our management can affect, um, you know, the, the way our water cycle functions. Okay, so we can manage to keep a little bit of cover on the ground. Um, we can, uh, you know, uh, we, can, uh, we can develop a grazing system for livestock that allows for our grasses to stay healthy and regrow. Um, and provide adequate soil cover to prevent erosion. Um, there's different farming methods that we can do. We can choose farming methods that involve uh, high residue crops. In this area, that would be something like wheat or hay grazer uh, or milo. Uh, those are what we call high residue crops that create uh, a, lot of, uh, a, a lot of residue that can be left on the soil surface and keep it covered. And we can manage that residue, keep our soil in place. Um, we can do what they call cover crops during a fallow period where we would plant a crop uh, strictly for soil cover and to promote our soil health by keeping live roots in the ground. Um, so this is all different ways that um, this is or this is all different ways that we can affect um, the water cycle on our property or in a given region in a given watershed and uh, make our soils and our water cycle and everything uh, function healthier. So, so Matthew, would you say then that we could have a little saying that says healthy water cycle needs covered soil? I think we could. And it works here on the ranch and it would work in your yard in town. It absolutely would. It Keep would work anywhere there is soil and anywhere there is plants. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for having me out. And the water 
goes down, down, down into the ground, 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 waiting to be found, 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 and the water goes round. Well, the next thing you know, all the gardens grow. They're enjoying a drink from the roots below. Transpiration. What water didn't sink in? It ran down the hill into the creeks, and it's running still. Surface runoff down to the sea. Evaporation, condensation, precipitation, infiltration, transformation, surface runoff, down to the sea, 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 happy and free.